Welcome to another broadcast of the Be Made Whole Healing School, everyone. This is Avril Riley, and today we want to talk about the seven times the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for us. And so let's open up in prayer. Father, it is not by power, it is not by might, but it's the spirit of the living God. Healing is your will. And so as your people watch and listen today, God, I ask that your word penetrate their minds and their spirit and bless their bodies with divine healing in Jesus' name. And so I want to start off by John, looking at John 10, verse 17 to 18. And the word says, for this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but it is I who lay it down and I have the authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my father. And I want you to know as you watch today that Jesus yielded his life voluntarily for you and for me. And this also indicate that the divine nature of Jesus was active in his resurrection. So as you watch this message, just remove all the distractions, find a quiet place and allow your spirit to be renewed by the Holy Spirit. Allow your soul to be awakened to the truth and the knowledge of the blood of Jesus Christ. As I share on seven different times, very specific, very key, very intentional, when the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for you and for me. Each instance having its own purpose. And so I want you to settle it in your spirit, in your soul, in your body today, that Jesus' will is healing for you. And so let's look at the first place his blood was shed. This was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Matthew 26, verse 36 to 39, tells us the story about it. It says, Jesus Christ was in deep agony. Agony means in anticipation of bearing our sins in his own body on the tree. And Jesus said to his disciples, my heart is overwhelmed and crushed with grief. It feels as though I am dying. And Jesus prayed intensely three times, my father if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. What was this cup? This was a potent cup filled with the wrath and the judgment of God. And so finally, judgment of our sins. And so finally, Jesus said, Father, all things, God, are possible for you. Remove this cup from me. Yet, not what I will, but what you will. In Mark, 30, Mark, Mark 14, verse 36. And so in intense agony, Jesus prayed earnestly and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Luke 22 verse 44 says, now when your sweat become great drops of blood, that's a rare condition known as hematohodrosis, in which an individual who is suffering extreme levels of stress, their sweat can turn to blood. And right there in the garden of Gethsemane, Satan attempted to kill Jesus before he could even get to the cross where he was to fulfill the prophecy made by Isaiah and complete the atonement. And so I had to say, why Jesus, why? Why did you put yourself through this agony? And then God says, let's remember the garden of Eden. You see the devil who is like a roaring lion he deceived Adam and Eve. He played havoc on their minds, their soul, their will, their emotions. Your soul is made up of your mind, your will, and emotions. And Adam and Eve, they passed too long, too long to not resist the temptation. And so what was similar about the Garden of Eden and the Garden of Gethsemane? Both gardens represented a battle for the soul. Now, Adam and Eve surrendered their will to the will of the devil, when they ate the fruit from the tree of knowledge. But Jesus Christ in the garden of Gethsemane, he surrendered his will to the will of the father by the shedding of his blood. He entrusted himself into the hands of God. And so the blood of Jesus Christ was shed in Gethsemane for the healing of our souls, the healing for our will, our mind, our emotion, our conscience. And so what Adam gave up in the Garden of Eden, Jesus took back 
by his shed blood in the garden of Gethsemane. And so the second place where Jesus' blood was shed was at the palace of Caiaphas before the Sanhedrin council. And Caiaphas, the high priest, asked, are you the son, the son of the blessed? And Jesus responded, I am. And you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of power and coming down with the clouds of heaven in Mark 14, 61 to 62. But this response that Jesus gave, it angered Caiaphas. And a verdict of blasphemy requiring death was rendered. And Mark 14, verse 65, tell us, they spat on Jesus' face. They blindfolded him, struck him over and over with their fists, and they beat him. And the beating Jesus suffered was fulfilled in Isaiah 50 and 6, and Isaiah 52 and verse 14. Because Isaiah 50, verse 6 says, I offered my back to those who flogged me, my cheek to those who tore out my beard, I never hid my face from those demeaning insults or from those who spit on me. And Isaiah 52 verse 14 said, he was marred more than any man. The face of Jesus was so marred to the point where Jesus was not even recognizable. The Bible said, your God, your Savior, his face was disfigured. Jesus was an object of horror. And today many, many people are suffering from low self-esteem, ashamed of their outer appearance. But let's go back to the Garden of Eden. God created Adam and Eve in his own image, but sin distorted their true image, and they became ashamed of their nakedness. And so I said, why, Jesus, why? Why did you allow your beard to be pulled out? Why did you allow your face to be disfigured? Can you just imagine that? Can you imagine Jesus' face being unrecognizable? But I have to tell you, Jesus' plan for redemption was rec recognizable, superior to what the enemy was trying to put him through. And so the blood of Jesus Christ was shed at Caiaphas' palace for the healing of our image for the healing of your image, so that one day we may look like him, the perfect image, the image of the only invisible God. And so the third place where Jesus' blood was shed was at Pilate, uh, the governor's official headquarters. But it came down to a choice, remember? Barbara, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Christ? And the people shouted, give us Barabbas! Let his blood be on us and on our, on our children in Matthew 27, 25 to 26. But what Jesus endured next for us was gruesome. You see, Roman flogging was a cruel punishment. The instrument of torture is a leather whip interwoven with pieces of bone and metal, which tore through skin and tissue often exposing bones and internal organs. In many cases, this type of flogging, it was fatal. And Jesus endured it for you and me. 39 lashes on his back. And Isaiah 53 verse 4 to 5 says it like this, Surely he has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities that brought us peace. And with his wounds, the stripes on his back, we are healed. And so why, Jesus? Why did you allow 39 lashes on your back? Every whip you took pulled off your flesh. Your body was completely torn apart. You see, we got to understand the love that Jesus has for us. He so loved us that he would go to lengths, to great lengths, to reconcile us and to restore the relationship between us and God. And so the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for the restoration of our health. He says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. So as you're watching, if you need healing, you just raise your hand and you just receive healing into your body because God paid for it at the cross. And so Jesus shed his blood to break the curse of sickness and disease so that cancer, diabetes, 
kidney disease, COVID, high blood pressure, you name it, will not have the power to ravish your body. Let that sink in how much Jesus loves you. And so he shed his blood so that we could live a life free from sin, free from generational curses, free from anything that causes your peace to be disturbed or cause your body to be as dis-ease. So right where you are right now, just lift your hands and just say, Holy Spirit, awake my soul to the knowledge and revelation of the blood of Jesus Christ. Because if we get this, if we get what Christ did for us, when sickness comes knocking, we will just tell the devil, wrong address, wrong person, because by the stripe of Jesus Christ, I was healed in Jesus' name. And so the fourth place where his blood was shed was still at the Praetorium at Pilate headquarters. And can you imagine in Mark 15, verse 12, they said, what shall I do with the man you call the king of Jews? And they surrounded him with a battalion of 600 shoulders. 600 soldiers, one man, 600 soldiers. And so Matthew 27, 28 to 30 said, they stripped him of his clothing and they placed a scarlet robe on him to make fun of him. They braided a crown of thorns and set it on his head. And then they placed a reed of a staff in his right hand. And they knelt down before him and they mocked him. They spat in his face. And then they took the reed staff from his hand and began to hit him repeatedly on his head, driving the crown of thorns deeper and deeper into his brow. Why, Jesus? Why? You disrobed yourself from royalty and came to earth. Why? You are the king of kings. Why did you allow the crown of thorns on your head and the beating in your head with blood drowning, dripping down your face? The blood of Jesus Christ was shed for the healing of our minds and our emotions. Healing from mental and emotional torment. So if you're being tormented, if your mind is being harassed by demons, you just call on the name of Jesus. You just apply the blood of Jesus because it was shed for the healing of mental and emotional torment. And I want to tell you today, you're not a mistake. You're not rejected. You are not forgotten. You don't have to be anxious or depressed. No conditions of the mind have the power to hold you back from the glory of God in your life. You have the mind of Christ. Now you can pull down every stronghold that seeks to exalt itself above the knowledge of Jesus Christ in your life. Pull down every vain imagination because the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for the healing of your mind, healing of your emotions in the name of Jesus. And so the fifth place where Jesus' blood was shed was on the cross at Golgotha. Can you imagine Jesus having to carry that cross weakened from the beating for you and for me? Matthew 27, 35, they crucified Jesus, nailed his hands to the cross, blood once again flowing from his hands. Why, Jesus, why? Why did you allow them to pierce your hands, our God? Remember the Garden of Eden. You see, God had appointed Adam to be the gardener and gave him the responsibility to be fruitful, which means no lack of any kind, no poverty, to multiply, be productive in his work. It's a part of God's purpose for man in creation. Adam was created to replenish and fill the earth, which means develop the earth's resources, make them useful for man. This means that Adam had to use his hands to do work, but because of sin, God had to curse the ground. And he said, by the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread. So here is why I allowed my hands to be pierced and the blood to ooze from my hands. You see what happened in the Garden of Eden? In Go at Golgotha on the cross, my shed blood reversed that curse. It reversed the curse of hard labor 
that was placed upon the work of our hands. Jesus' blood redeemed our, the work of our hands. And so you have the power to prosper. Blessed are the work of your hands. So if you hold up your hands right now, you just say, blessed are the work of my hands because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And so the sixth place or the sixth time when Jesus' blood was shed was still at the cross at Golgotha. And Matthew 27 verse 35 again said, they crucified Jesus, nailing his feet to the cross. Once again, blood flowed from his feet. And once again, we say, why Jesus, why? Why did you allow them to pierce your feet with nails? Go back to the garden of Eden, Genesis 1:28. Our God is a good God. He's an awesome God. He's our redeemer. He's our restorer. So if we go back to Genesis 1 verse 28, we see Adam was given dominion. He was to subdue the earth, meaning be the king, Adam, be the ruler, have authority, govern wisely and responsibly. But Adam gave up his dominion and his authority to the enemy. And so when Jesus allowed his blood to be shed from the nailing of his feet at the cross, that was for making my steps, your steps secure and restoring unto us the dominion and authority that Adam gave up. And Revelation 5 verse 9 to 10 says it like this. For you, Jesus Christ, was slain and with your blood you purchased people for God from every tribe, every language, every people and nation. And you have made them to be kingdom and priests to our God. And they will reign on the earth. You were created to reign. And so at the cross, Jesus restored that dominion authority. And so the power of the blood of Jesus Christ will establish your throne on earth. The power of the blood has restored your dominion and your authority that Adam gave up. And understand this. God will give you every place where you set your feet upon, as was promised to Joshua in Joshua 1 verse 3. He said, I have given you authority to tread, which means to walk, to trample, to step, to march. Right where you are right now, you should be walking and trampling and stepping and marching upon every serpent and scorpion and all over the power of the enemy because nothing shall hurt you. Nothing shall harm you. Luke 10 verse 9. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus Christ. You have power. You all have authority. And you have dominion in the name of Jesus. But paid for by the blood of Jesus. And so the seventh time when Jesus' blood was shed, was still at the cross at Golgotha. John 19 verse 34 said, when the soldiers came to break Jesus' leg, because that's what they would typically do, they found out that he was dead. And instead of the soldiers breaking his leg, they pierced his side with a spear. And it brought on a sudden flow of blood mixed with water. Why, Jesus? Why? Help us to understand why you caused your blood to be shed at the cross. Why, Jesus? Why did you have to die? Why did they have to pierce your side even in death? Why? Remember the Garden of Eden. Deception started with the first Adam, but redemption ended it, hallelujah, with the second Adam. Deception started with the first Adam, but redemption ended it with the second Adam. That is the reason for shouting, the reason for praising, the reason for glorifying God. Genesis 2, 18 and 21 to 23 said, for God thought it was not good for Adam to be alone. So he caused Adam to fall into a deep sleep and he took one of Adam's rib, closed up the flesh at that place. He took a rib from Adam's side, closed it back up. And he made the woman and presented her to Adam. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And we have to understand that when Adam's side was pierced, out came his bride Eve. 
the woman he later named Eve, came from his side. And so God took the life out of Adam and gave it to Eve. Adam gave of himself for the life of the woman, flesh of his flesh, bones of his bones, which means the woman was a part of him. And so we ask God, why Jesus, why did you allow the soldier to pierce your side? It was for our salvation. The second Adam side, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is known as the second Adam. The second Adam side was pierced and out came his bride, the church of Jesus Christ. And John 6 verse 51 says, I am the living bread that came down out of heaven. And if anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Fulfilling the prophetic act God did with the first Adam in the Garden of Eden when Eve came out and became his bride. And so 1 Corinthians verse 15 and 40, uh, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 45 says it like this. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living soul. The last Adam, which is Christ, became a life-giving spirit. In other words, restoring the dead to life. The Adamic covenant was broken, but the covenant was not canceled. The blood covenant of Jesus Christ redeemed every promise. I'm telling you, there is power in the blood of Jesus. So whatever you're watching and whatever you have need of today, I want to remind you that the blood of Jesus Christ is your victory. The blood of Jesus Christ from, the, from Gethsemane to the cross, the Holy Spirit collected every drop of Jesus' blood. And when the power of the Holy Spirit raised Christ from the dead, every drop of his blood was returned to Jesus. So the blood of Jesus Christ will never, ever lose its power. How do I know that? Hebrews 9 verse 12 said that he, which is Jesus Christ, went once and for all, for every one of us, into the holy place, the holy place being the holies of heaven, into the presence of God. And he did that, according to Hebrews 9 verse 12, not through the blood of goats and calves, but through his own blood, having obtained and secured eternal redemption, that is salvation, salvation for you and salvation for me. Physical, emotional, mental, spiritual healing is a result of the work at the cross of Calvary. I shared my testimony with you before from a racing heart. It is as simply as looking to the cross, applying the blood of Jesus Christ to your bodies, believing without a shadow of a doubt. Doesn't matter what you see in the natural, believing without a shadow of a doubt that the blood of Jesus Christ has already paid for your healing. And right now, just lift your hands and receive your healing. Be made whole in Jesus' name. And Mark 6 verse 56 said, Jesus went to villages, to cities, farming communities, to the people that, and they would beg him to touch, to even touch the hem of his garment. And everyone who touched him was healed. So if you are needing healing today, just lift up your hands and just say, God, I thank you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for shedding your blood for me on the cross from Gethsemane to Golgotha. Thank you. And even now I apply the blood of Jesus Christ over everyone that's watching this broadcast. I apply the blood of Jesus Christ over your mind, over the work of your hands, over your financial prosperity, over your mind, over your emotions, over whatever, whatever part of your body, just touch it right now. In the name of Jesus, I apply the blood of Jesus Christ over you. And I ask God to release his supernatural healing into your body. In Jesus' name, be made whole in Jesus' name. Paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. And so I thank you for watching this broadcast today. 
and I will continue to pray for you. And if you need specific prayer for healing, email me at pastor at avrilreilly.com. But know this, Jesus Christ shed his blood for you and by his stripes, you were healed in Jesus' name.